So about 10 years ago, when I was at university, I did an acting class. And they asked me to do a monologue. And I decided to do the one that Owen does from this episode, when he's having that one-on-one -on -one with Ed Morgan. And the response that I got was, that was really good. Now, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I could really see you playing the role of a paedophile. I'm sorry, what? Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kevin, I am a geek, you're watching Kevin the Geek, and it is time for another Torchwood review. This is Season 1, Episode 3, Ghost Machine. Please make sure you do subscribe to the channel if you are new and click that notification bell so you know when all my videos go live. And please do drop comments down below and let me know your thoughts. Now obviously, if you've seen my previous two reviews of the first two episodes of Torchwood, yeah, this series didn't have a great start. And I think really the idea that it was a Doctor Who spin-off and having John Barrowman as Captain Jack, that's probably what kept most people on board and just trying to give it a little bit more of a chance. Because really, from the first two episodes, I think a lot of people wouldn't really have wanted to watch that much more of it. This episode, however, this is where you see the really good potential of Torchwood. At least in the first season. Because compared to the previous episode, day one, where you had that stupid sex monster, you try to focus more on emotion. And this particular episode did what that one did, where we tried to focus on the human aspect of it. But here, they did it a million times better. Now, the premise of the episode was pretty simple. You have an alien artifact that is able to draw on the emotional energy from historical events. And it kind of taps into those. And of this, this device is in two pieces. One half of it, which is the one you see for the main bulk of the episode. It shows events from the past. So you see Tom Erasmus Flanagan when he was a young boy during the war getting evacuated. And he was scared because he thought that everyone had forgotten about him. And then you have the big one. Ed Morgan and Lizzie Lewis when he raped and murdered her. In 1963. Now what I loved with this episode. Is the effects. That you see that this artifact has. On people when they watch it. Because it draws on the idea that. You are feeling. The emotions. You're not just seeing them. You're feeling them. And for anybody. To watch. As someone. Is about to get raped and murdered. I don't care who you are. You would feel pretty shitty with that, at the very least. But when you're able to sort of feel the emotions that the victim was going through at the time, oof, you can tell what a dangerous artefact this thing really is. And I love the little scene where they kind of showed how this device affected people and how they viewed it in different ways. Because Gwen and Owen both had an experience. And Gwen takes the device home one night. She uses it in her flat. And she uses it to kind of recreate and, and revisit some of those really lovely moments that she had with her boyfriend Reese. 
And that was a great little scene. And there were some really lovely comedy moments, like when she was chasing after him with a stapler to try and do the buttons on his flies, you know, because his, his zip's broken. But Owen goes quite dark. And in the first two episodes, the main kind of sense you got from Owen was he's sarcastic, he's a horny bastard, he's you know, out there to shag anyone and have fun. and You don't really see him as a very serious person. Here, you kind of get to see his moral compass. And you see how deep this experience has affected him. To the point that he is quite a dangerous person. Because he tracks Ed Morgan down. And he has that wonderful monologue. And I love that scene so much. It's so tense. And the music in it, which, okay, it's not technically music. It's a heartbeat. And I love that subtle impact that it had on that scene. Having that heartbeat, which basically was the heartbeat of Ed Morgan and... As Owen is going through the scene, you hear it beating more and more and more and getting faster and faster. And, you know, as the adrenaline's going and, and he's getting scared because he knows that Owen knows that he murdered this girl 40 odd years ago. It's a wonderful scene. And I love that monologue so much. Obviously, Yanto and Toshiko, again, they don't really have a lot to do in this episode. Jack does, though. And, yeah. What this episode brought back was this sort of weird, <sighs> flirty sexual tension they seem to be trying to set up between Jack and Gwen. And it's not just in this episode, it's in a number of episodes. And I still don't get it. To this day. Uh, every single time. It's like they have a close up together. And it's like their eyes linger. And it, you know, it might be a hand on there. Obviously in this one. Jack's teaching her how to, to shoot a gun. And he pulls her in closer. So it's literally like her ass is on his crotch. And yeah. It's just weird. I never got why they wrote that. It still baffles me to this day. Especially as it's sort of disappeared later down the lines obviously this episode it does have a lot of cheesy moments you can't get away from that and a few silly little jokes here and there and the whole thing with bernie harris everything the start of it wasn't great the ending though when ed comes to his house Obviously, Toshiko's kind of giving you a bit of background. So he's like, he's agoraphobic and he's trying to commit suicide and all these different kind of things. It's a really tense scene. Particularly as Gwen and Bernie have both used the other half of the artifact. The one that doesn't show you the past. It shows you emotional scenes from a possible future. And it does kind of try to play on the sort of sci-fi trope a bit that anything to do with time travel, really, when you have a situation where it says you can't change the future. You know, if, if you know what the future is, you're going to try and do everything you can to stop it. But ultimately, eventually, it's going to happen whether you intervene or not. And sometimes by trying to intervene... To change the future, you're actually going to cause that event that you're trying to change. So it was a really interesting kind of idea to go with that. But that final scene, it just has me on the edge of my seat. And I've watched this episode a lot because I really, really like this episode. It's not one of the greatest of Torchwood, but it's definitely in the top echelon. I would definitely say. And I've watched this episode, what, maybe somewhere between about 10 and 20 times, at least over the years. And it's still 
gets me emotionally. It gives me goosebumps. And it gives me a little tear in my eye. Which is a really weird reaction, I think, to have when someone effectively commits suicide by running himself into a knife. And he's the guy that you shouldn't feel sorry for in any stretch of the imagination because he is a murderer and a rapist. And yet, somehow, here, the writing and the music and the performance, it just works. In a way that it shouldn't make you feel emotional about this despicable character. So yeah, really weird. But like I said, I absolutely love Ghost Machine. It's a fantastic episode. What are your thoughts on this episode? Please do drop a comment down below. Next week's episode, of course, is going to review Cyberwoman, which I've really gone backwards and forwards of over the years. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I hate, despise it. So make sure you come back and watch that. And make sure you check out the channel tomorrow, because I'm doing the review of Doctor Who, The Runaway Bride, the second Christmas special. I should probably find out my Christmas hat for that. But for now, until next time, my name's Kevin, I am a geek, and you have been watching Kevin the Geek. Goodbye.